Today is moving day. It is the first episode of the new location on the Bedrock Guide, and I'm really excited to be bringing some friends along with me today. And those friends just happen to be villagers. But before we head over there, I have chosen to do something that most people would consider to be a bad idea. And if we're being honest, I think it's a bad idea too. But we're doing it anyway. I was doing some test building the other day, and during the process of test building, I tried out several different color palettes and I landed on quartz being my absolute favorite. And so pretty much the entire city is gonna be made out of some sort of quartz build. This is gonna be terrible, but it's gonna look great. So that has shifted some of my immediate plans and you'll find out what those plans are soon enough. But for today, we're focusing primarily on the villager breeder and finding enough quartz to get the build done for this episode. Some other supplies that I need for today include a bunch of bamboo, some terracotta, and all of this stuff. And hey, by the way, I'm at my new location. And there it is, absolutely beautiful. I thought my original location was really cool, but this just absolutely dwarfs it in every aspect. There's so much space here, and these mountains are absolutely crazy. Down in this valley is where I'm going to build my base for the remainder of this season, and there's gonna be a lot of terraforming because I want it to be mostly flattened out, so you can imagine what's gonna happen here. But for today, I'm actually gonna start out up here on the mountainside, and that's where the villager house is gonna go for the villager breeder. So before I can do anything, I need to clear out some space to actually build this house. And it's not very big, so it shouldn't take very long. Next, I'm going to mark out the build perimeter of where this house is going to go, just to make sure that it fits before I start placing blocks. I originally had the entrance facing out toward the jungle, but I rotated it by 90 degrees so that it's facing that direction. That way, when we're down on the ground, we'll get a side view of the house, and I think that'll look much cooler. But from here, I'm just gonna grab some of this quartz, and I'm gonna use the stone cutter. Do not use a crafting table. It's an absolute waste of resources, because if I go in here, I get 64 pillars, for 64 blocks of quartz. However, if I go to do that in the crafting table, well, it's actually the same thing. This is where you get some real savings. If you're gonna make these quartz bricks, it's four blocks of quartz for one quartz brick versus one for one. Sometimes you're gonna get a better deal, sometimes you're not, but always err on the side of using the stone cutter. It's just a better idea. So on to building. I'm starting out this house by building some quartz pillars. And I actually don't like the way that that looks. I'm gonna convert these regular quartz blocks into smooth quartz. In order to get smooth quartz, you have to smelt it. So we'll just leave that in there for a moment and carry on with the build. And now if we go back and take a look at it, this is so much better. The smooth quartz kind of makes it look like these ridges in the pillars have faded away over time. I think this is a good look. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with these stone brick walls and transition them into andesite walls. But for the moment, I'm actually just going to do two of each on each wall section because it'll be easier to go back after the fact and get some more natural transitions that look like wear and tear. With the pillars and the walls all complete, I'm going to go over and start the roof line by taking a combination of bamboo slabs and bamboo mosaic slabs and just tracing around the walls that we just built. And then I'm going to make sure to pop out the corners because I do think that looks a little bit better. And this is where this build starts to get really fun. I'm going to dye all of this terracotta white. And yes, I know that does not look very white. It looks kind of pink. Don't ask me, I just work here. Then I'm gonna toss the white terracotta in the furnace and let it cook up. And again, just like its regular form, it doesn't look like white terracotta. It looks like blue and yellow terracotta with white borders. But you know what? I'm not gonna ask any questions because it looks great. With my glazed terracotta in hand, I'm gonna come up here to the top of the roof line and I'm gonna place one andesite wall here and maybe a cobble wall here. And then all the way across, 
I'm just gonna place this glazed terracotta facing the same direction. If you didn't know, glazed terracotta is directional. So depending on which way you place it, you can come up with some pretty cool patterns. And these are just two examples of what you can do. Each color of glazed terracotta has totally different patterns to them. So you can come up with some really interesting combinations. Last but not least, I'm gonna take some of this smooth quartz that we got earlier and craft it into stairs. And then from here, I'm gonna place an upside down stair directly above the bamboo planks and then just carry this all the way around the glazed terracotta. And you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, I know there's some gaps in here and we're gonna correct that a little bit later. But before I get to that, just a few more minor details I wanna show you. If I take some lanterns and hang them on the underside of these slabs, they will connect and provide a good source of light for this building. To sell the effect a little bit more, I have some of this white concrete, which if you place it right next to this quartz, it looks a little bit darker. Light naturally dissipates the farther away from the source that it gets. So I thought it would be interesting to play around with textures and colors to see if we could sell that effect as if this light was not quite reaching these pillars. And so maybe it's a little bit more dark. Up close, eh, it looks okay. But farther away, you start to get a little bit of an effect that looks like shadows. Now, I know it's kind of hard to tell in the rain, but just believe me, okay? And those are all the building basics you really need to know for this house. And now I just need to repeat that again for the second room. Looking at this beautifully designed and finished villager house, it's kind of dawned on me that I didn't really tell you guys what the theming of this area is going to be. I'm going to be taking inspiration from ancient Babylonian architecture and putting my own twist on it. It definitely won't be a one for one recreation, but there are a lot of really cool features in Babylonian architecture that we can use to design a really cool Minecraft base. And this is just the beginning. But for now, the beginning will have to do because it's time to go grab some villagers and offer them a new job. I'm gonna take my bed with me because the sun is going down and the village in question that I'm going to hire these villagers from is right on the other side of this mountain. So I see one and two. Those are the most likely candidates for hiring. Sorry, buddy, you're too young to work a job. So what I'm gonna do right now is place down some track close to these villagers, grab a minecart and there you go he's trapped he's not going anywhere where's your friend at not you we'll find more of you later oh hello would you like a job that was not a yes or no question it was a yes or yes question come back here there you go you're coming to work for me you're gonna love it okay now i'm gonna take a nap so that they stay safe and in the morning we'll transport them home as the saying goes the shortest distance between two points is in fact a straight line and i'm gonna stick to that as much as possible starting right here i'm gonna put down a powered rail and several regular rails in a row and then i'll break a block put down a redstone block and another powered rail and honestly just repeat this process until we're back to the house if i've got enough rails nope I ran out right there hey friend are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime well ready or not let's get going see you later have fun it's just like a roller coaster you're gonna love it unless you hate roller coasters how am i gonna get you all the way over there you know what you're fired how about you would you like a job you look like you love standing in the corner that's exactly what i'm gonna hire you to do come on bud i know it's minimal effort but go ahead and hop in the minecart and uh we'll be on our way no i don't think i could have made this any easier for you okay there you go good effort okay i've got all of the rails placed up to the breeder and this should be the easiest part i hope all i gotta do is give these villagers one more little nudge and they should be home free now i'm gonna nudge the villager one block forward so that he lands right at the edge of the breeder oh too far that's fine we should still be okay hey welcome home bud now how do i get out of here Huh. I guess this is where I live now. Hey, welcome home, villager number two. And go home. Go home. There you go. And now I'm stuck again. Ugh, that hurts. Oh, oh, that hurts too. No! Why? Why? 
Y, villager Y. Flaw in the design. I'm gonna have to correct if my suspicions are true, which I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, it's just wide enough back there because of the, the wall texture and not a solid block that it, it, he scooted back and fell down. This didn't happen in my test world. I'm afraid the only solution to this problem is probably gonna be to put solid blocks right here and that's just gonna, oh. Oh, that pains me. It's gonna, it's gonna hurt my design. I don't know, maybe we can make something fun out of it. Hi, minecarts at the ready. I hope you guys appreciate the process because it's a process. I had somebody comment on a video recently saying, why don't you take out all the mistakes? Well, you know what? We learn from our mistakes. And if you're not learning from this, then why are you watching? Villager, are you the one that was staring at the corner? Oh no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not where I want you to go. I've made a big mess. Allow me to clean this up before we move on. How am I gonna get him out of there? Okay. No, 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 no. Come back. Come back. Okay, let's try this again. In you go. No, get in there. Not there. If you hop out of here, I'm gonna go get your friend that I was gonna get in the first place. And you're fired. Home sweet home. After making a huge mess of my villager breeder setup, both villagers are now secure and should not be going anywhere. In order to breed, villagers need two different things. The first is food. And rather than standing up here and tossing food to them, I'm going to create an auto delivery system that will give them food at the press of a button. And to do that, I'm going to place a dropper right here and a dropper right here. And then I'll put a piece of quartz right here and right here, followed by one redstone torch right here. You don't need a second one. In fact, if you put a second one, it's gonna break the system, so don't do that. Then another quartz block right here and one right here. And I should mention these don't have to be quartz. They just have to be solid blocks. And then I'm going to put a piece of redstone right here and right here, and you can see that rapidly tick. And then it shuts off both the dust and the torch. This is called a burnout clock. So then I'm gonna put a piece of quartz right here and a piece of quartz right here followed by redstone dust all the way across and that's pretty much it then all i gotta do is put a button right here and a button right here just for aesthetic purposes you really only need the one but either one of these will work and if i press the button you'll hear a click that activates the system followed by the rapid clicks of the burnout clock and as long as there's food in these droppers it will feed the villagers and allow them to start breeding and in order to make this as efficient as possible i'm going to put a hopper into the side of that dropper followed by a double chest that we can store excess food and then repeat the same thing on the opposite side and load it up with potatoes with the food delivery system in place i now need to put a few beds in here in order for the villagers to start breeding if I only place down two beds, the villagers are not going to breed. They will link with the beds, but this village will only allow a maximum of two villagers because there are only two beds. If I place two more, the maximum capacity for this village becomes four. If I give this button a couple of presses to feed the villagers, that should stock them up on food to the point where they are willing to breed. But if I'm standing here, they're kind of locked on me at this point. If I back up far enough, they should stop paying attention to me and begin the breeding process. Yes, maybe. Okay, I see hearts and do we have a baby villager? We do and he falls off the fence post and down into the water. And here comes baby villager number two. For all the problems we've had so far, this is actually going surprisingly well. Now that I've got two baby villagers in the villager breeder, I've got these two levers right here that are attached to sticky pistons that will retract these two blocks once I flip the levers and allow these two villagers to go goodbye into a water slide. <laughs> Quite literally, it is a water slide that goes out here to right about where the scaffolding is. If I go down this scaffolding, it will lead into a little drop chamber where those villagers are gonna land. And if I make my way up the water slide, we should be able to meet the baby villagers about halfway. There they are, hey! Aren't you just having the time of your life? It's great. The reason that we are transporting these villagers away from the villager breeder is because they are linked with the beds and maxing out the capacity of the village. And in order to clear that capacity, they have have to be moved about a hundred blocks away because that will be outside of their detection radius and they should automatically unlink from those beds and this right here is a hundred blocks away i didn't see the storm cloud are you still linked with your bed i guess there's really only one way to find out if this has indeed worked correctly 
these villagers should now be able to breed again because the cap should be cleared and they should have more than enough food. I have no idea what's going on. I'm going to try to fix this, but I've got my camera account pulled up right now and I want you to see this. I'm going to go over here and break this bed and I want you to watch the camera account while I do. I'm going to break it in three, two, one, and it's broken. The villager is mad because I broke his bed. He's unlinked. He's far away from the village. When I place it back down, he relinks with it. They're over a hundred blocks away. Now I'm going to move him a little bit farther away and hope for the best, but this is getting crazy. Okay, something's happened because I have a third villager and here's what I think it was. I broke all of the beds for the moment and I broke my bed and I broke every single bed and workstation in that neighboring village. I'm wondering if the two villages merged somehow and quite possibly prevented those villagers way over there from unlinking to the beds in here. There's really only one way to find out. I'm gonna put a bed here and I'm gonna put a bed here and the green sparkles are okay because that's these two villagers linking with them. Now, moment of truth. If I put a bed here, will one of the other villagers link with it? It does not look like it, I think. We are finally in the clear. Oh my goodness, what a hassle this was. I know they're talking about rebalancing villager trades, but this I think is far more important. Villager mechanics are so broken, but my villager breeder is now working correctly. So as I was saying earlier, as long as these two villagers have enough food and these villagers are far enough away and not linked with any other workstations or beds in the area, this breeder will go infinitely and I'll be able to stack a ton of villagers in preparation for the next episode. Get ready for it because in the next video we are going to build an iron farm and that is going to open up a world of possibilities. But until then, don't forget to click the like button, leave me a comment if you learned something new today, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And hey, don't go anywhere. There's more Bedrock Guide content on the way.